Hi guys, today I want to show you an example of how to avoid a tropical revolving storm. So to do that, of course, I can't take you on a ship and show you what is done there, but I'll show you a little exercise uh, conducted on a chart where I'll show you uh, an example of a situation uh, where you have a typical tropical revolving storm in the vicinity of the ship's voyage and uh, what was done uh, on the bridge and what was the action by the master in that case. All right, so let me show you. So the case study is, for example, let's take a date. It was 29th of July and it was 12 o'clock in the afternoon when the vessel was uh, en route from the Straits of Bali uh, to South Africa, so Durban in particular. And this was the route of the vessel. And uh, the vessel was informed that uh, there is a TRS in a position northwest of the vessel's known position and well clear of the intended track where it was there. Additionally, um, this was where the TRS position is. And additionally, there was also a looming low pressure system located off the eastern coast of Madagascar. So you can see Madagascar on your left side, extreme left of your screen is Madagascar. That's a little island uh, there. So that is where the low pressure was, if I can show you with the arrow. And then I'll close up on the chart and I'll show you what was done uh, with respect to the ship's voyage. So you can see on 29th of July, 12 o'clock, when the report was received, uh, the accurately known position of the TRS plus the forecast position for the next 3, 4 and 4 kt hours was plotted on the chart. This is known as the 1, 2, 3 rule of avoiding the TRS. That's the uh, strategy used by some ships. We have the sector method, of course. Uh, I may talk about the sector method some other time, but today I will use the 1, 2, 3 rule to avoid the TRS. And you can see the position of the vessel at 12 o'clock as well. All right. So the T plus 24 and T plus 48 hour positions was drawn and that gives you the maximum intensity of the TRS uh, are those red circles are drawn as well. So that is the maximum intensity of the TRS that can be felt in the next 24 plus 48 hours from the presently known position of July 29th, say 12 o'clock. All right. So after plotting the TRS position, the predicted position was plotted for the next 48 hours and the track as well. The decision was made to maintain the course and speed as per the passage plan and then await further instruction of how the TRS will develop through the voyage. On July 30th, and that is 12 hours after the position, last position of the TRS was received, uh, the position of the TRS was then plotted again. All right, because six hours would have been too less. Now on the ship, it's normally six hourly that we plot. Uh, but here, but just to make it easy for you to understand and see what's going on, I decided to plot the 12 hour updates so that uh, we have uh, some clarity and some uh, less of clutter on the chart. All right, so after, normally on the ship, it's every six hours update, but here I'll show you every 12 hours of update. So after 12 hours of receiving the position, this is where the TRS was on the 30th of July at midnight. And uh, this is where the ship was with respect to the TRS. So this is the actual position of the TRS, and this is the position of the ship. Then from the accurately known position of the TRS, the position and its intensity of the TRS for the next 24 and 48 hours was drawn. So the red circles, actually, if you don't know what that means, that means that is a gale radius. So in that radius, the maximum force of winds can be experienced. That is the gale radius. All right. So uh, those winds can, of course, those are uh, strong winds and that the ship doesn't want to experience. Otherwise, there will be a lot of uh, heavy weather and vessel will roll, pitch, it may get damaged. Um, so that is the, those red circles are the ones that the ship needs to avoid because that is the gale radius. It's known as the gale radius, the radius during, in which the ship will experience um, uh, gale force winds, all right, which is not very good for the safety of the ship. So again, it was seen that the vessel was well clear for the next 48 hours as well. And hence the decision to maintain course and speed was still maintained as per the passage plan. Then 12 hours later on 30th of July at 12 o'clock in the afternoon again, the next position was plotted. The vessel proceeded further. This is the 12 o'clock position on 30th of July. And this is the accurately known position of the TRS. The one that you see a red circle now, that is the low pressure that was starting to develop. 
so the low pressure could also be a threat uh, because it could turn into a trs later on so you have to keep an eye on that as well at the same time you can see that the trs is slowly recurving towards the vessel's original intended track so at this point of time the vessel needs to start preparing to ensure completion of heavy weather checklist so you start preparing for heavy weather checklist so you have the ism checklist of course you start uh, taking off uh, steps from there so that's basically informing the department heads uh, securing everything on deck securing everything inside the vessel as well making sure there are no loose objects uh, uh, securing the live boys live rafts on the deck uh, the, the cargo should also be extra lashed there are no shifting objects so on and so forth so you prepare for all that and you start monitoring weather reports uh, you inform the company of your progress as well uh, as you go along so the company knows where your position is the decision was still to maintain the course and speed and await further instructions because the predicted track and gale range were still more than 600 nautical miles. So the, the big red circles that you see the next, uh, the gale radius for 24 and 48 hours that you see was still more than 600 nautical miles away from the vessel, which is a very good distance. Anything more than 400 to 500 nautical miles is fantastic. Again, there is no recommended distance. The further away you stay from the gale radius, the better, of course, it is. All right. Now here still it was seen that for the next 48 hours, the vessel will still be clear. So the decision was to proceed with the original course and speed. Then 12 hours later on 31st of July midnight, uh, additional warning was received. The vessel, uh, this is the position of the TRS. Then the vessel also proceeds uh, further and the T plus 24 and T plus 48 hours gale radius of the trs is plotted again so still the vessel was about 510 nautical miles away from the predicted 48 hour position so still the passage is still fine uh, vessel was happy to proceed on its intended track however an eye was being kept on how the trs has been uh, the trs was being tracked over a period of time and you could see the movement of the trs you could see the recurving of the trs uh, uh, this is the southern hemisphere, so uh, we kind of start to notice the behavior of the TRS in the southern hemisphere. And I was kept and how it is recurving towards the vessel's intended track. The vessel kept going further and 12 hours later on 31st of July at 12 o'clock, uh, the decision was made to alter course to northwest because uh, the vessel doesn't want to take any chances, doesn't want to come into the vicinity of the gale radius. So plan B, of course, uh, you must also always have a plan B, was to put wind on the port bow and alter further to north if required. All right, so if the, uh, you are, so what we do is the first decision was taken based on how the TRS was behaving, the track of the TRS and how it was recurving. However, you must always have a plan B because with tropical revolving storms, they are very unpredictable in nature. You really don't know, you can't predict how they will behave. Of course, there's a pattern of behavior based on the historical studies of the TRS, but still a chance cannot be taken. So there should always be a plan B. And that is our plan was to put uh, the wind on the port bow and alter further to north. But right now, the decision was made to alter course to northwest. And that is what the vessel started to do uh, from the 12 o'clock, 31st of July uh, position. All right. And the idea was that uh, maximum distance to be created for the next 48 hours so that the vessel if the vessel had continued on its track then it would have gone into the gale radius so the idea was to create maximum distance between the next 24 or 48 hours of the trs position and the vessel's position so this was uh, how the vessel was how far away the vessel was uh, this is about 375 nautical miles so this was getting close now all right so like i said the effect of the gale radius could be anywhere uh, within the 400 500 nautical miles so the, you need to put some distance now between yourself and the TRS as the TRS starts to recur. So alternation of course was uh, conducted to keep the TRS on the vessel sport side and to avoid crossing the path of the TRS. You could not have crossed ahead of the TRS although TRS uh, so based on the 48 hour position it was not possible to cross ahead of the TRS so it was better to alter course to northwest of the intended track and to start putting some distance between the projected position of the TRS and the vessel. All right, so you can see the gale radius was also plotted for the next 24 and 48 hours and the vessel decided to maintain a course of 300 degrees true to pass to the north of the TRS 
and still awaiting clear information on the low pressure that has now converted into TRS Sara. So you can see on the left, north left of your screen, so top left corner of your screen, the low pressure that was previously there has now been converted into a tropical revolving storm. So an eye has to be kept on that storm as well. So because the vessel has now started to proceed northwest on 300 degrees true course uh, to create some distance between the current TRS and the further developing TRS. All right, at the same time, uh, the positions and the projected positions of the TRS was being monitored and I was kept on the newly developed TRS as well. And the vessel was uh, at a very good distance from the TRS. It has successfully avoided the first TRS that started to develop. However, an I was being kept on the next TRS. On 1st of August 12 o'clock, as you can see that the on the chart itself, we have plotted that the original TRS has now been downgraded to a low pressure. So the decision was now to alter course to 251 degrees, go southwest and rejoin the original intended track to the next waypoint. And you can see this is where the vessel is. And the projected 24 hour position of the TRS Sarah on the top left corner of your screen has also been shown. So the idea was to cross, of course, ahead of the TRS Sarah and rejoin the intended track uh, this way here because the previous TRS, the original TRS that we were avoiding was now downgraded into a low pressure storm and it was anyway going away from the vessel's course so that was fine it was recurving in such a way that the vessel was clear of it and now the vessel is also steering clear of the newly developed trs and that is sarah based on the projected 24 hour position all right so this was a little exercise that i wanted to show you how the trs avoid is avoided on ship based on the weather reports that you obtain the weather reports like i said are obtained for every six hours or if the masters are uncomfortable then even narrower the weather reports are issued for every six hours not much changes between six hours but here just to show you a considerable distance between the last positions i used 12 bar positions all right so vessel uh, was clear of both the trs and uh, happily rejoined the course so this was an example that i used to show you how Practically, you can avoid a tropical revolving storm in the sea. So, of course, it depends on the uh, master's uh, experience. It depends on the master's decision. I'm not saying this was the right and the only way to do it. This was one of the ways to do it. But of course, tomorrow when you become masters, you may take your own decision based on your uh, comfort level and based on your experience. Uh, you may decide to go south uh, of the original internet track and create some distance. But here we were also keeping in mind the commercial aspects of it and uh, how much deviation to be carried out. Of course, the safety of the vessel is the first and the only paramount consideration you should keep. But here we were trying to do it in a practical way. So that's why we did that. All right, so let me know what you thought about this exercise. Let me know what you thought about this video. I'll be looking forward to hearing your comments. Bye guys and uh, keep learning.